Hey guys, and welcome to game number 25 out of 100 of my Human vs. AI series, where I'll be taking on the AI-powered Scrabblebot best spot in a 100-game match. We're currently sitting at 9 and 15 as we officially approach the quarter mark of the series, so still in a bit of a deficit, but we're slowly but steadily climbing back, and hopefully we can keep things going strong today, so let's go ahead and jump right in. It looks like we'll be first, and we've got some ends. So what do we want to do with them? Uh, I guess I could just play Hunk, keep A and N on my rack, which is not great, of course, but I mean, it's still 22 points. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to play none for six. It just seems like way too big a point sacrifice. This leave is probably better. I mean, it's not great for bingoing, but it is fairly well balanced and good for scoring. I just don't think I can justify a 16 point sacrifice. I mean, ANN isn't good. It's not that bad. And it's not like keeping AHNK on your rack is so amazing. So I feel like probably just hunk. Annoyingly, it takes a lot of hooks too. I mean, it takes an S and a Y on the back and a C and a T, I guess, on the front. So a lot of hooks that I don't have, which I certainly never like opening hooks I don't have if I can help it. But like I said, I mean, it's 16 more points than, than none. I mean, I'm not going to trade here. My rack isn't that bad. So, all right, let's do it. Well, that's actually a pretty nice draw, all things considered, I feel like. Definitely some potential for eights. An L would give me non-glare. C would give me chronogue. Probably a few others as well. Uh, T would be Negatron, for instance. D would be Androgen. So yeah, there's a large number of eights. I don't believe I have any available now. On orange from the U is not a word. That would be funny phony, but it is uh, not good. And of course, my opponent, who is a AI computer, will be well aware of that. So not going to be doing any silliness of that sort in this game. And yeah, what else? Non-range. It's not the craziest sounding phony either, but also not good. And all right, well, I have non-glare now. Don't think I have anything through the F. So, all right. It's definitely risky. Non-glare does actually take an S. A lot of non-words are adjectives, but non-glare is a noun. So definitely risky. Interesting play of flu for 14. I guess... Okay, hard to really infer too much from that. Maybe just a clunky rack. Probably a pretty decent leave. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty volatile between that and also this O right above or right below the double word. But bingo's a bingo. Gotta take it. Okay, not a terrible draw either. Maybe Jalop, J A L A P, next turn. Most Jalopin. So, oh, I have Aji over here. That's 42. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. And Clap is not a bad leave at all. Good synergy, especially with a K for CK words and the E in non-glare, if that stays open, which it very well may not. So, yeah, that looks like a good option. I don't think that chains, it changes with the bot's play of Fluey. Fluey does not take an S. It's worth mentioning it's an adjective. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to be 42 points, keeping a good leave, and taking away that hot spot. I don't have a bingo here, I don't think. I'm close to, like, Japonica or Myolika. I'm actually close to several low prob 8s with a J, but don't have it. So, all right, that's the play. Let's do it. And I have Polcat. Is it going to play? Uh, Don't. Oh, it does. Yeah, of course it does, with Pet. I guess that's probably it. Oh, I have the uh, really cool eight as well of Conipodle. Maybe it's just pronounced Conipate. I'm not actually sure. It's good with an E at the end instead of an L. I believe it actually is another term for a skunk. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So I've got that. I've got, once again, Polecat and Pet. Do I have a nine? Uh, I don't think so. This doesn't quite look familiar. I'm close to like porcelain or something, but not quite. Well, now it's not going to be relevant. So yeah, Polcat or Kona Puddle? Probably Polcat, right? I mean, it scores more. That's 71. Uh, 
uh, oh, I have, well, Kellotype doesn't actually fit, but I do have Kellotype, C-A-L-O-T-Y-P-E as an 8 through that Y if it were to fit. Copulate outplace through the U is not going to fit. Don't think there's anything through the K. So pull count once again was 71, 65 here. Yeah, I don't see a huge reason to sack the points here. And actually pull count is probably even better because it sort of takes out the hunk hooks. I mean, it does give back pull cats as well, but this makes it harder at least for sevens ending in S to play. And I mean, there's just not a lot of liabilities with this. Kona Pottle gives probably more floaters back and another S hook that could be tough to block. So I think this is probably better. Uh, at least it's good positionally and it scores six more points. So let's do it. Okay, I'm liking the way this game is going so far a lot. Up 126, I draw, I draw a blank and I have to imagine I should be bingoing here. Gonna certainly have some stuff through this A and this T, like durative, D-U-R-A-T-I-V-E, the minimum. Anything else? I doubt I have anything from this U. Just, yeah, with two U's and a V, it's kind of tough. Unvaried is also playable through the A. Anything from the N? I'm just thinking if the bot blocks both the A and the T, which is certainly possible, what other options I'll have. And there might not be any. Worth keeping in mind, of course, this non glare soak, which is still quasi-open if you can get something through the ES. I don't think... I have such a play, though. Maybe a 9 through the LN? I don't think so. It's not super easy with the UV on my rack. Vanadium or something like that. That would be a 10. That's going to be pretty tough. Yeah, I don't think so. Anything with... I don't think there's any sevens, right? With with an S at least. Don't think so. So all right, we're just kind of waiting to see if the bot blocks the A and the T in pull cat. I'm not actually sure I have a bingo elsewhere on this board. If I do, I haven't quite seen it yet. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be tough to start with an N. I'm not, I'm not even sure I'd be dying to bingo there, honestly, at this score anyway. Would only score like probably low 60s and I'd be putting a tile in the triple triple lane at this score so yeah best spot taking its time here as we've often seen it do in these kind of situations where it's either up a lot or down a lot just because the margins I think become closer like the difference in win percentage is smaller wow it changes six uh, than it would be in a more competitive game so, wow, trade six by the bot, and uh, I guess I'll just play durative, right? I mean, that's probably, unless I have something that doubles the V, I guess I'll look. So, all right, what else? Uh, what else do I even have? Virus side, that doesn't work. F, G, H, I, something with an I, right? No, unvaried is worse. It's probably worse defensively, and it scores two fewer points. Uh, out dry, that doesn't hit the double. Yeah, I think durative it is. Seems pretty solid. I wonder, would it be crazy to play Durative here. It's actually more defensive because it makes. Well, I was gonna say it makes sevens harder to play, much harder because it's hard to. You can't underlap durative with the V there. Whereas if I play it here, then you can play something above the E. But this does at least take out pull cats, which is nice because pull cats could be pretty annoying to deal with, and all four S's are still unseen. Either way, I'm giving back a hook with durativs, but I think I like this. I'll just take the points. I mean, let's face it, I'm going up 200 points. I better not lose this game, whatever I do here. All right. Not a good draw, but I can't really complain. I've been drawing very well this game, so I was due for something like this. Uh, I don't have much here, I don't think. Almost cannot, but don't have a T. There's a lot of T's left, though, so... I do have that as a nice bailout if I can pull a T. I mean, I could always just do this, but it keeps five consonants, which isn't great. 
I mean, it's not horrible, though, so it'll depend a lot on what he does and whether he opens something I need to address and uh, what my options are. I have Haji, too, that, which is worth keeping in mind. I'm obviously, at, at this kind of score, I'm not going to do anything like this. I mean, I keep a terrible leave, and I set up uh, several hooks that... Well, I have the R-hook for Rich, but I, I don't want to give him that. I need to be as risk-averse as possible at, uh, at this score being up to 79 to 77. Like, this is... This is not going to happen often, so I need to try to take as full advantage of it as I possibly can. Like I said, there are still four S's left and a blank, so I'm sure the bot isn't going to give up yet, but uh, I don't know if I've ever lost a game after being up over 200, and uh, I don't plan on this being the first if I have my way. I've definitely lost after being up well over 100. That happens. I've probably even lost a game after being up 150, but... Uh, 150 is pretty tough to come back from. Okay, and the bot does bingo, but no huge surprises there. And now I need to decide what I want to do with this Q. Like I said, I can play QI over here. I definitely don't want to play fuck here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's unlikely he's going to bingo with it, but with four S's on C, I'm just sort of gifting him an easy 50-point play. I don't want to do that. Like, I definitely don't want to let the bot get within one bingo range. I'm also... I don't hate something like this. Like I said, I mean, if I draw any of the T's I have Kana, I can easily redraw an I for QI or something. And this is very nice defensively. And once again, I'm going to be up still like 150 after this play. I take out the E and mostly take out the D. He could still bingo from the D, but that's a little bit harder. So that's, I think, a reasonable option at, at this score. Again, if it were a closer game, I'd probably want to get rid of the Q, but I think here, and I mean, I could even draw, like, Cades or something. You know, there's some A's left. There's a lot of I's and a lot of S's. Like, I could even hit Cades for 70. Like, I don't think the Q is actually that terrible a tile here. I mean, I'm not saying it's good, but I don't think it's as bad as it sometimes can be. And like I said, I think at this point, probably trying to play a little defense is a bigger priority than just getting rid of the queue immediately, given the state of the score and also just the state of the board being that there are going to probably be some opportunities for me to hopefully dispose of the queue in a reasonable manner next turn. So yeah, I think Chief looks good, very defensive, gets rid of some clunkers. I don't really see any way to score. Like I said, I don't want to play something with Haji and just give back a easy hook there. Do I have anything else through the ANA? Doesn't use the Q. Not really that I'm aware of. And I don't see any other great scoring options. So, all right, yeah, let's play Chief. I think that's reasonable. Not the best draw. Didn't get a T or an I really. Anything I wanted to help with the Q, unfortunately. So, that's a little bit annoying. And I'll have to decide whether I want to... I mean, I don't have, like, any way to get rid of the Q now. And the bot quickly lays down Oxic. So, I mean, I'm not dying to trade here. I don't feel like that should be necessary. Like, I see, I don't think I can do something like this at this score and open that. Yeah, like, I definitely don't, I don't feel like I should need to trade here. I mean, I just don't have a lot to even really do with this Z, though. It's a pretty tough rack. Well, I guess I have Rogue. I can play the Q, but there's no way I'm doing that with four T's for Rogue, okay, four S's for Rogues. That's extremely, extremely dangerous. Oh, I almost have Danazol, too. That would be nice. Huh. Yeah, so what do I actually do here? I'm not sure. Like I said, I really don't have a lot of great options. I think I might actually, again, just kind of keep trying to play some defense over here. Block the E and the A. Maybe even, honestly, like, it keeps QZ, but I don't hate Melder because this really starts to restrict his bingo options. Yeah, there's still this D. If he bingo's under durative, then I'll probably have a pretty big comeback. I feel like that's, I mean, it substantially must reduce his bingo chances. 
So that seems like a fairly reasonable option. I mean, it keeps QZ, which I don't love, but hopefully I'll at least be able to score well with it. I'm definitely keeping the Q more than I normally do, and I think part of that, like I said, is just with the score, as lopsided as it is, I'm trying to play more defensively than usual. I guess there's also Meld, but I'd rather play Melder just because I have a bad rack, and I'd rather try to turn over more tiles just to maximize my chances of drawing, say, that T or an I for QI again. Just in general, if you are going to keep the Q, it's better to uh, to keep as few other tiles with it that don't help you as you can, just to, once again, maximize your chances of being able to bail out of it on your next play. So, yeah, I think I like this. Again, I mean, well, I, I like it in the sense I think it's one of my best options here. I don't like it in the sense I'm obviously not thrilled about keeping QZ, but... Still feeling pretty good. I'm going to be up 140, and hopefully if I can get a decent draw here. All right, that's definitely uh, more than a decent draw. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have cannot. I have Q. I have many ways to get rid of the Q, and then uh, the Z is not a bad tile at all here. I should be able to hopefully score well with it, and also it's a good tile to keep in reserve. If uh, your opponent does bingo, you often have uh, a good play with it to counter that and score well. So... Yeah, probably cannot is fine on my next turn. I can also even just play Cod and Toxic. That's perfectly reasonable too. I've got options. Many options that are all reasonable. And if those plays get blocked, I have uh, QI over here. I guess I have Cod, but definitely not dying to do that. I do have an eye for QI, but there's still four eyes unseen. Okay, Gage comes down, so... Toxic is blocked. I also now have Cod over here, so I can play Cod. I can play Kanan. I have, like I said, a number of very reasonable options with the Q. It's definitely time to get rid of the Q. I've had it for like two or three turns now. That's already a lot longer than I normally like keeping it. So it's not like I have any great Z plays that would warrant keeping it again. So it's definitely time to dispose of the Q. Uh, probably Cod. I'm not dying to play Kanats or Kanat, I don't think, with all those S's left. I could just be giving back. I don't want to give him uh, something like Wisp for like 50. Doesn't It just doesn't seem necessary. I mean, it's probably not going to be enough for him to win the game, but it's just not necessary. Like, I mean, Cot over here is two less. It's it's just safer. It sets up Taxer here, I guess, but I don't think that's a big deal. It's not like he's going to have any overlaps. Yeah, I mean, this, this is just fine. Like, I, I'm still up 140. I have a fantastic leave, D-E-I-Z, which should score pretty well if he opens anything up. Uh, I'm in very good shape here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take it. All right, uh, I pull an S. Get B-V, which is a little clunky, but this isn't too bad. Probably try to just play something on the right, finish the job here of locking down the right-hand side of the board. I've done a good job of keeping everything tight on the top area of the board. There's really nothing above uh, the fourth row to be done here. Really just no space, which is exactly what I want given my lead. So, yeah, definitely feeling pretty confident here. I don't, I don't even know what's best. Probably just something reasonable through this R. I'm not actually even sure what. Like, I don't have any great plays here, but that's okay. As long as I don't open anything up and I can respond to whatever the bot might try to set up. Like, I could even honestly just play Biz over here. There are a few E's left. He might have a play over there, but I score pretty well. I get rid of my two of my somewhat clunky consonants, and I do... Yeah, if the bot doesn't have any or likes not to go there, I give myself a good chance of getting a good play next turn. So honestly, probably just Biz is fine. I don't. I just don't really have a great way to shut down the right. I guess I could. I could play Rived, which would have been a good play probably to shut down. Now there's this A open, and I guess I gotta decide. Do I even want to bother to block it? Because I have to sacrifice a lot to block it. It's not that easy for me to block the A, and there's still going to be this D. I think in this kind of position where there's multiple bingo lines and I'm already up this much, I prefer this approach because the idea here is I'm just piling on my lead, and I'm like, even if the bot bingos, well, certainly once, and probably even twice, even if the bot somehow bingos twice, I should be able to still win this, I would imagine. And also the nice thing about this play is, if the bot bingos, it should give me maybe like a 40-point play as a comeback. So sometimes when you are you have a lead, it's good to try to set up these 
scoring plays if you think your opponent's going to bingo, uh, and even sometimes to make a deliberate, fairly blatant setup, because you figure if your opponent uses that spot, well, that's another turn they didn't bingo, uh, and that either deprives them of a chance or at least accelerates the end of the game, and if they don't use that spot and they bingo or play elsewhere, then you have another uh, another chance to hit it and compound your lead. So with that in mind, I'm going to just go ahead and play Biz and concede that the bot might bingo on the bottom, but I am fine with that. And see, so, yeah, because now if the bot bingoes on the bottom, I'm just going to play Vide for 45, and I'm going to be up so many points that even if the bot, like, bingoes to this A for 80 and then bingoes from this D for 90, it's not going to win. Like, it, this game is over for sure. Uh, even against Best Bot, which is uh, probably... One of the scariest opponents to play, uh, even with a lead. And you see, okay, so yeah, best about playing Tiz, clearly getting desperate over here, just uh, hoping, I don't know, that I guess I don't block or something crazy happens. So, all right, I guess I can play Vets. I could play Ides as well for 42, but probably rather shit the V. Also, it just keeps a Val. I always like if I can, when I'm in these kind of situations where I have a massive lead, just to keep a Val, because, like, what can happen, like, let's say I play... Ides. Now, the bot could try, like, if I draw four constants, the bot could maybe play something here, like Train. And if I have seven constants, I can't block it, and maybe the bot gets a triple-triple, and something crazy happens, and I, I might lose, or, uh, or come closer to losing than I want to. So, like, in these kind of situations, it's always good, if you can, to keep a vowel, just when you're up a ton, and really, a catastrophe like that, a like, triple-triple most likely, is the only way you're going to lose, or some massive bingo that way. Whatever your opponent tries to set up as a desperation attempt, you're guaranteed more or less to be able to block. If you have seven constants, that's when you can really run into trouble. I've seen some games lost on nightmare constant draws where someone's up like 100 plus points, and their opponent, of course, as they have to to have a chance, opens this lane very aggressively, and the uh, the person who has the lead having seven constants can't do anything about it and ends up losing the game. It's a really, really bad way to lose. I've been there. So with that in mind, I'm going to play Vets, sacrifice a few points, but keep the Val just in case. And wow, okay. I have some bingos here. I've got Brazed, Abiders, Darby's, Sidebar, and Seabird, I believe. Uh, do any of them play? Bot bingos with Septoria. I don't think any of them play. Have anything from this. D? D braids. That's not good. It's D brides. I guess I need to be slightly careful now. I mean, the bot cut it to 88. Yeah, I guess I should probably be slightly careful just in case the, there's some out bingo from this D. Uh, wait, tri baits doesn't fit. Red baits. Uh. No, nothing through this E, nothing through this I. Yeah, I don't think I have a bingo here. Feels like I should, because I have so many on my rack, but I don't. So, all right, I guess, why don't I just, like, not empty the bag, right? Just in case there is something. I don't think there's anything from this D. We'd have to start D, E, Deuteron. No, that doesn't work. I don't even know what the bot could have from that D. Probably there's something from this T it could have. I would imagine there's at least something, or from this I. I mean, is there anything, like, I could also try to fish for a bingo myself, but I don't really think that's, uh, I mean, that doesn't really seem necessary. So, yeah, let me just find some sort of reasonable play that either blocks or doesn't empty the bag. I could, I mean, I could even just play bird. Keeps AERS, which is a really good leave. Leaves one in the bag. Blocks the T, at least, if there's anything there. I feel like there's, there's got to be something from the T that the bot would be threatening. Oh, tourneys. There you go. Okay, so the, yeah, the bot could have tourneys from the T. So I block that. I don't think there's anything from the D. Is there anything from this I? Yeah, I guess the bot could have intoners or something. So, like, I mean, I could, pl like, I could play rebid. I'm... I'm pretty confident there's nothing from this D. And, like, I guess, okay, what I want to check here is even if, if there is some old bingo from this D that I miss, would I still win? I think the answer is yes. I just want to look, though, for another minute. Because, yeah, I would have to start D, E. And the rest of the pool is just pretty bad. Like, Deuteron, Dentures. Yeah, without another E, it's very tough. 
it's hard with all those tiles to be positive, but I feel pretty confident that there's no bingo from from the D. And like I said, so if, if say the bot played like something with the W here and the Y here, like that's the worst case scenario. This is a good way to think about those situations. So then that would be like 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 13, 14, 15, 19, 57, 62, 112. So that would get 112. I'm getting 26 for this. That's 440. Yeah, the bot would actually win. You know what? I don't really care too much about spread here. And I, I just don't want to lose this game. Like, somehow if I'm missing something, like, I, I don't know. I just want to, I think I'm just going to do this. That way, if the bot bingo's there, I'm fine. Because I didn't empty the bag and I'll have another turn. And I'll easily be able to win in the end game. But I, I don't want to choke here somehow. Um, oh, I just realized I actually have this really cool play also. I have aired for 33, which is pretty, pretty fun. Making five inside overlaps. Of course, it also empties the bag, so I could still run into trouble if the bot bingos for a lot of points there. So, all right, yeah, let's just play bird. And, I mean, I could, look, I could even draw an Alpingo myself, maybe. I mean, I could draw something, there's probably something I can draw from this D. I mean, I could draw, like, Deerists or something there. Maybe the bot won't block. So this is uh, this is probably very reasonable anyway for a spread. Oh, let me watch my time too. I'm down to two minutes. So all right, let's just do that. And I draw the Y. So probably not going to bingo. All right, bot plays Euro. So using that spot I was mentioning before, uh, no bingos. Oh, there's this non glare spot I forgot about. I guess there isn't. I probably could have used that before, actually. I guess I could have played Bizes over there when I played Biz. But yeah, it would have been pretty risky anyway. Okay, anyway, let's focus on the task at hand. The bot has... Wow, NNSW. I mean, it's not going out. I guess it has, like, Wiss over here. <gasps> Excuse me. Or Worn through this OR. I must have... Uh, I've been close to Chieftains a couple of turns. I've noticed that, but haven't quite gotten it. I wonder if I have like a setup here. I don't know. I probably don't have time to find it. Like something like this. I mean, the bot does still have an S, right? Like for setting up Dory is the idea. How about... Yeah, this is actually interesting. Like this forces the bot to play dots. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to play Iris for like 50. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. And then the bot has to play dots, and it still can't go out. And then maybe I can set something else up. Like, this is probably... I don't know if this is actually best. But, like... But, they, yeah, then I take away plays like Wiss. And so I think it's best. Like, the bot has to block that, right? I mean, it's got to play... It's just going to let me have it. Wow, really? I guess... Interesting. I'm actually surprised. I guess with dots, I mean, I could go out with D rays. I guess I wouldn't have to go out though. I would just nickel and dime it because it has W N N. Maybe I could even like end stick it. Yeah, I wonder if I could have end stuck it. Like if it didn't. So if it played dots, I mean, I don't know. I probably can. It still has like worn and own. Then yeah, I don't. Eh, I probably couldn't know because it would have enough spots. I wouldn't be able to end stick it. But I guess I could go out in like three. And probably just get so many points that's better to play, better for the bot to let me have Iris. Okay, so that was actually probably a really good play then. But okay, uh, so once again, final score was 486, 376. So pretty good win for me here. I definitely drew pretty well, but let's see how I played. The opening rack hunk seems like it's got to be right. Non glare only bingo. Um, oh, I didn't even consider jail here actually. I just saw. Ahi. That being said, I think Ahi is a better play. It's only two fewer points. Uh, there's really just no reason to put the J there. And this, the L, I kind of think, goes pretty nicely with both the C and the P. You see a lot of words with C, L, or P, L. So, yeah, the, this seems like a much better play. Ma, yeah, Polcat and the Konopodl. Polcat seems fine. And the bot, yeah, rough draw keeps auto draws E, I, I. Yeesh. Uh, yeah, I guess you don't want to do this. Yeah, this just really starts to exhaust a bit of the board. And, I mean, you're keeping AI. So the bot traded six. Interesting. Keeping just an E, not the ET. I wonder 
The bot seems to really be taking into account a lot the fact that it's a little constant heavy now, 31 or 37 consonants, 21 vowels. I imagine that's why it kept just the E instead of ET, because I probably would have kept ET there, especially with floating A. So interesting decision there by the bot, just keeping the E. Okay, it looks like I found all the bingos here. Yeah, durative, unvaried, outdrive. I saw all these, durative looks perfectly fine. Bot bingos with unheated. Yeah, here I make a play that's not very high on static as I expected. I saw fuck here, but again, four S's left. There's just no reason. I'm giving any sort of four order word here and getting an S. That's 50 points, just giving it away for no reason. Uh, not, I saw this too, not gonna do that. This is also fine. I mean, there's never anything wrong with just getting rid of the Q. Uh, I guess I, yeah, I can play through this E as well. Definitely not going to do this and give back the uh, the S hook. Yeah, merge is fine as well. But uh, I like this play, like I said, just, uh, you know, keeping the Q isn't that bad here with all these bailouts. It's nice and defensive, so I'm good with that. But uh, gets more vowels, plays Oxic. Interesting. Yeah, I guess this just gives back so many points. Either way, it's looking pretty bleak for the bot at this point. I could have played meld here, but like I said, I liked this uh, play. Just a couple fewer points, more defensive. Uh, gets rid of another tile, gives me a better shot at having a good play with my Q or my Z next turn. Cannot, yeah, it's a little higher on static. Uh, yeah, like I said, definitely not doing this at this score, but um, there's just no reason to give back a huge play with cannots here um, when I can just do this for two less. So I can do that. Amazingly, the bot still actually didn't have an S here. And yeah, here, like I said, I, I realized that at the end of the game, I, I missed Vises on this turn. That being said, I would not have played it. I'm up, I'm going to be up 150 points after this turn. Like, there's just no reason to do this. Like, yeah, sure, it's not likely he's going to triple, triple through a B, but if he comes down with, uh, I mean, there's got to be plenty of possibilities still that uh, that the bot could have, right? I mean, yeah, if, it, if the bot comes down with uh, probates, I'm going to be very, very unhappy. It'll be a tie game all of a sudden and uh or rowboats or what have you i'm sure there's many many more that i'm not seeing but uh in any case it's not likely but it's certainly possible especially after a play like via which signals probably a fairly strong rack there is no reason to open that uh, just sacrifice the 17 points at this score keep your s uh, like i said set up this counter scoring spot to counteract the bingo threat on the bottom so so far looks good uh yeah vets is fine no reason to play debits and open another line and hold the v uh, bot bingos with Septoria, and yeah, I was correct, there's no bingo here. I could have also, I guess, just dropped an E. That's fine as well, but I'm fine with Bird, like I said. Uh, just, you know, no reason to even sweat here and uh, risk somehow having missed something from the D and uh, either losing or coming close to losing. This is perfectly fine. Even if the bot were to bingo from the D or something like Intoners, I'll have another turn to easily outscore it in the end game. And the bot had Unswore here. Uh, under so doesn't fit... Place zero, just throwing in the towel. Yeah, I, I imagine, I wonder if my play was actually optimal. It's still interesting to me. The bot didn't want to just play dots. Is it that bad to play dots? I mean, I don't think I have another... Yeah, like I don't have any other outs that are super high scoring. I guess I would, like if I played dots, I wonder what I would have done. I guess I could, like, make another setup then, right? Yeah, I guess what I would do is I could play, like, say, S-A-Y, and then E-R-S and says or something. I don't even know. But it still feels like, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do the math. It wouldn't have affected the outcome of the game, and I don't want to bore you guys too much. But it just seems weird to me that the bot wouldn't be better off just playing dots. And, I mean, this is a 48-point outplay that I got here. Like, I don't know. But clearly, uh, I mean, the bot is supposed to have perfect endgame. So the bot is probably seeing something I'm not. And like I said, I don't uh, I don't want to agonize over it too much because it wasn't that close a game and it wouldn't have affected the outcome. But in any case, it looks like Dot was a pretty good play. So, yeah, really happy with this game overall. Uh, no mistakes, really, that I can pinpoint. A couple interesting turns that I maybe could have done something different. But overall, um, I'm happy with this. Didn't really, like I said, certainly no clear-cut mistakes. And, uh, yeah, drew pretty well, played pretty well. And, uh a nice win to get us within five. We are now at 10 and 15, uh, officially through the first quarter of this series. So uh, not bad at all. We're 40% win rate at this pace. We'll, uh, we'll win 40 out of 100, which is probably a little lower than I was uh, hoping to. I'd say my goal coming into this series was to try to get uh, as close to 50 as I could. Uh, I'd be okay with anything in the 
40s. Um, this bot is clearly uh, quite a force to be reckoned with, especially compared to Hasty Bot. Uh, but yeah, in any case, especially after the pretty horrendous start I had to this series in the first few games, can't complain about finishing the uh, the first 25, 10, and 15. Not bad at all, and hopefully we can keep uh, keep doing well in game 26 and the next quarter of the series. So uh, appreciate all the support so far, guys, uh, and uh, really uh, thanks to everyone who's watched uh, this series and all my other videos for the last uh, several months, and I look forward to continuing this series and uh, jumping into the next quarter very soon. So I look forward to seeing you all for game 26. Thanks again, guys, and have a good one. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. With the holiday season coming up, I wanted to remind you that I do offer Scrabble lessons, and they can make a really fun gift if you have a family member or friend who loves Scrabble and might be interested in learning about tournaments, or just having a fun experience while getting a few tips on taking their game to the next level. If you might be interested, then click the image right here, which will take you to the lessons page of my website, which also has some additional information and reviews from past players who I've given lessons. If you might be interested or have any further questions, feel free to contact me on my website or on my email, both of which I'll post in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys.